All right, we're gonna do this game show speed, all right, you guys? Let's see. All right, we're good? Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. <laughs> um, my name is Johanna Sawalha, AKA Coach Joe. And I'm a triple national. I'm Swedish American Jordanian. And you're welcome to talk to me in Swedish, but for the sake of inclusion, I'm gonna hold this talk in English. And now I'm gonna do this game show speed, okay? Because we lost a bit of time. So, um, just so you know who's talking to you today, I've been an executive coach for more than 25 years, mostly in the US, but internationally. And um, I now live here in Stockholm. Uh, I'm also the host of the Boss Lady Speaks podcast. So that's a bit about me. Uh, Rita, can I, can I call you out? Can I call you out? Can I talk about you? Okay, so Rita uh, asked if I'd come and uh, speak to you guys. Uh, and she said your job is to talk to them about stress management without giving them more to do. <laughs> Okay, I like that. It's an impossible task, right? Um, is that me? Am I? Is, is it me? <coughs> um, so you, you've been told to get your stress level down, right? Who's told you? Get your stress level down, right? Um, and then some genius around you gives you a list of things you gotta do, right? Like you don't have enough to do. So all the well-intentioned advice people are giving you just seems like more work. Who agrees? Yes? Who likes good idea people? No. I hate good ideas. I hate people with good ideas. I've got an idea for you. <laughs> or my mom, she's like, you seem stressed. You need to calm down. Like, do you have a mom like mine? Like you hate it, right? I hate you. Like, why don't you just like dig in and help? <laughs> or my husband, who, who has someone in their life who is like, uh, you missed a spot. Why don't you like do that? Like my husband, he'll be with me when I'm like cleaning up in the kitchen or quick sweep and he's like, um, you know, I know a really good way of doing that. That's great, like, why don't you get in and do it? Like, I hate you and I'm gonna divorce you. Tare. <laughs> So who can relate? People have great, great advice, right? Hate them, hate them. So I'm gonna not give you any good advice at all. You're just gonna have your lunch, sit back, breathe for the first time in like a year, two. Who's a four year here? All right, when did you last breathe? When did you last sleep for eight hours straight? Yeah, exactly, 2016, exactly, right? So here's a list of all the possible things that could be stressing you out right now. The study load, the sheer study load, who's got that? Just like the amount of it. The pure fatigue, you're just tired, right? Who cried last night? I'm just kidding, you don't have to tell me. <laughs> The external pressure, the external pressure, like, you know, aunties and, you know, mothers and counselors and what have you, right? But let, let me start with the study load. When I coach people and I coach startup founders, I coach business leaders, I co coach politicians, and whenever they are stressed like y'all are right now, it's not about getting the job done. Because don't you always have more to do? Isn't there always an ex exam? There is, right? So here's what I do with other leaders. Um, you, you gotta get them. So I get them. First you gotta get heard, right? Before any good advice, the good advice people that we hate, right? You gotta get gotten. And I'm not gonna therapeute you. 
that's not what it is, right? But you gotta, you gotta know that somebody really knows what the heck you're dealing with. Because frankly, you guys, you're privileged, right? You're privileged, you got in this amazing program, that you're the promise of the future. So the problem with that for you guys is that you don't have any rights to complain, right? That was taken from you. That was taken from you when you got into this program. I have some um, kid, the nine, who remembers 90210? The, right? Nobody saw it, anyway. Privileged kids in Beverly Hills, right? I got a few of those, and I'm the only one they can cry to, because anybody else is like, you little nitwit, like you privileged little, like, what do you have to cry about? You have the money, you have that, you know, you got everything. So, they're not, they can, they, so there's a spectrum of emotions that they're not allowed to have, right? So they don't, they're not allowed to be confused or sad or tired or halting. Has anybody heard of that term, halting? Hungry, angry, lonely, tired? <laughs> Honey? So to get you all the study load, let's just start with that. You are in the busiest busiest time right now of your semester, okay? You're not in the wrap up, we're not at the holidays yet, you're in the squeeze, right? So it, it pretty much does not get worse than this. So when you are in a time like this, it often feels like it's always been like this, doesn't it feel like I've never been, I've always been unhappy. <laughs> I've always been tired. It's never, my life is shit. Like I've never, it's never been good, right? I hate life, I hate myself, I hate the school, I hate you. Like, oh, and we hate the people who do well and seem relaxed, right? They're also the worst. The good idea people and the relaxed people. <laughs> Meanwhile, you're like, you're fine, and then you go home and you cry. You go into the bathroom and you cry. Has any guy crying? Any boys? Come on. Oh, I love that. Oh, he's like, yes, I'm a crier. All right, so, and then the pure fatigue. So the things that people do when they're tired, you know, have you ever found your phone in the fridge? <laughs> like, have you ever like, got to get up and pee at night and you peed in your shoe? Like you thought it was the bathroom. Like, Pure fatigue, not only does it make us do crazy things, it makes us dumb, you know that, right? Like when we just, reptile brain, we get dumb, we make funny choices, don't get hit when you cross the street, right? So, so you're tired, I get that. And then again, the external pressure, you know, from teachers and parents and mentors and uh, the good idea people. So that's when you gotta do the Elizabeth Warren blinders and bulletin board. So blinders, right, you gotta put them on, you know, like horses have, so they don't get scared in traffic. So blinders. So you don't look left, you don't look right. This is what I'm doing right now, you focus, right? And the bulletin board is, whenever someone says, you know, do this, here's your next task, you go, thanks for sharing, great, duly noted, and you put it on the bulletin board, and then you go back and focus, right? But then finally, and this is why I have a job, the internal pressure. That's the interesting one, because all the rest you can kind of deal with, um, but your internal pressure is the devil you don't know. So the first one's the devil you do know. The internal, doesn't it just throw you curveballs, like this like nasty things it says? Like your negative internal dialogue tells you really mean things. Your internal bully. And the thing is, you are overachievers. That's why you're here, right? You're smart, you get into this program. Did you think for a second that that voice that got you in, by the way, because it made you like study and you're ambitious, right? 
Did you think that voice was gonna leave you alone once you got in? Did you think like, once I made it, right? Then, I'm in, I made it. Who feels kind of cheated? Like, I was supposed to like feel good once I was in, and now I feel worse. So, you feel pressured, and you tell yourself, everybody cares about themselves. I'm the only one who thinks about myself. Here's one thing that you may not know about this inner dialogue, is that you really do think, or that voice thinks that people think about you. Like, you really do think that people think and have opinions about you, and maybe talk about you. Nobody does, right? Everybody's busy talking about themselves in their head. But there's this perceived peer pressure, right? There's this perceived peer pressure and thinking that others are getting ahead, this demon. And in my, I don't know, but I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna say it. You might even, even though you love the people you're with, you might even be a bit concerned they're doing better than you, right? Like, I love you, let's study together, not like, let me just see how far they got. So there's this thing, right? There's this peer pressure, like you wonder what's going on over there. And I swear, nothing. They are just as concerned about themselves as you are, I swear. Um, so there's this never ending list of shoulds and old people like me were like, you are too young to have shoulds, you know. They come later, mortgage and kids. But you are where you are. Like, this is, this is your rea reality, yeah? Um, <laughs> and you're like, when is this lecture starting? Like, when is she going to start? <laughs> I will. Or oh, not. All right, I will give you something. I, I, I swear, I'm gonna give you something that you can walk away with. So what I'm gonna give you now are the golden nuggets of your entire education. I'm gonna give you the things that your parents absolutely forbid. They said, don't do any of this. They raised you not to. They gave you consequences if you did it. Right. And I spoke to the Permissions Bureau. You're allowed. First thing you're allowed to do is talk back. You're gonna start talking back. But to everything you think you should do. I don't care if you seem like a mad person talking to yourself, because you can just pretend you have your iPhone earbuds in your, in your ears, right? Like, when that stuff comes floating through your mind, that I should, you know, I'm not doing well, I'm a fail, I got a poor grade on this, like wah, wah, wah. It is crazy that you don't talk back. It is crazy. Anybody who would do that to you on the street and start attacking you that way, you would push back, right? You'd be like, what are you doing? What are you talking about, right? But we don't do that with whatever comes through our head. We just let it, like, take me, evil twin. <laughs> so, it's um, have you ever seen those court shows where like there's this criminal and you know that they're highly guilty that wants to defend themselves in the courtroom? Like, I don't need a lawyer. You're like, oh my, like that person's so going away for the rest of their lives. <laughs> and that's what it's like when you in your head, you don't get your best defense for the assault. Your best defense in your head is like, let's call it your higher self. Right? Not the ambitious one, not the overachiever, not that one. The one who actually knows that this too shall pass. Like, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. And that's the one who needs to have a rebuttal to every single negative thing in your head. One is like, you know, I'm never, I'm never going to make it. I'm not even going to drop out. They're going to kick me out. I am so bad. Like, I'm going to fail and it's gonna be in my resume, and I'll never get a job, and I'll end in the gutter, right? And I'll have the panhandle, and everybody will be ashamed of me, right? So every single one you have to talk back to. 
So, um, so you got to get on your own team. So if, if it really is like, I'm failing, it, let's, say, let's say you are failing. Let's say that you didn't do well on a few tests, right? Will you have tests again? Yes? All right. Let me see your hands. Will you fail again? Probably at some point. Yes. Will you also do great? Yes. Do you have a bunch of achievements? Did you get into this program? Yes. Right? You are allowed to come back at that. You know, I don't let anything through that way. If I catch one, I'm like, you don't let say that to yourself. That's me. I would never let someone say that to my kid. Um, and, and then quit. Quit. Like, quit the stuff that won't move the needle. I know that when you're stressed, it seems like everything is equally important. And it isn't. It is not. So it's time for a bit of slash and burn. Like everything that doesn't move the needle, everything that is not like this exam, or like this is actually priority right now. And you have three things. You always have three things that are top priority. The rest has to wait. Or you toss it. Find the three, don't do the rest. Because if I saw your list of things to do, I swear I could, I could slash most of it. I'm like, nope, you're not doing that. Nope, 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 nope. Some of it is later, some you can delegate, and some you just don't have to do at all. Um, and it may not be the things that you think you should take out. I would not scratch family dinner on Sunday. I would not scratch celebrating your buddy's birthday. Not at all, right? I'd rather have you do that. And then, you know, study for the next exam. Um, and if, if you want to prove me wrong, like find me after or email me and I, I can show you how that's done. Because listen, where you're heading, right, into leadership in this world, I deal with those guys and women every day. I have to do the same with them. But the ones that last, they know how to do that. And here's another thing I would do. I would have you spend more time preparing preparing your study schedule than actually executing. So you, I'd rather see, okay, here's my week, here are the hours, what's next. Have you, have you heard about 80% planning, 20% execution? If you planned it, you'd be, you wouldn't be stressed. Like, okay, this hour is for this, this is for this. Um, and then also, you know, you could quit this program. You're allowed, you could. You'll be fine, you won't die, that you really could. That's always an option. So whenever you wanna quit this program, know that you can, and then don't quit. Right? But it is there, but that's like the last thing, then you can't get back in, so try everything else first. But I think you need to know that, right? You are allowed, you're free, you're a free, free human. You're allowed to do whatever you want, including quitting, if you want to. You know, universe loves you anyway. Your mama loves you anyway. Um, and then finally, um, hang out. And that just has to do with what I said. Like don't scratch off the people. Because that is something that once you get into business, it really is who you're gonna buddy up with. It's re it really is. Like who's gonna be your team? And do they like you? And do you know how to hang out, right? Like social skills. You know, I'm married to, to internet architect. I mean, that's weird, you know? Like, I'm like, dude, like, you don't know how to like talk. But now he knows. We've been together 13 years, but like, he's been so in the ones and zeros and, you know, so long, right? So he doesn't, I'm like, and you know, someone's crying because they broke their leg. Or, I broke my leg. He's like, oh, they tripped. That's stupid. I'm like, yeah, but they're upset. So maybe you want to like <laughs> relate. But my point is, like, learning to actually relate to people and be with people uh, is much smarter than just get ahead, get ahead, get ahead. All right, this is a quote. Words full of wisdom that someone important said and can make the reader get inspired. I'm not doing it. I think they're stupid, just like good idea people. So I'm not going to give you a uh, Other than, if I were to quote, I'm going to quote the, the man, Mark Twain. 
the, the man of all one-liners. And he, hang on for a second. He says, if it's your job to eat a frog, it's best to do first thing in the morning. And if it's your job to eat two frogs, it is best to eat the biggest one first. Who here procrastinates? Oh, it's most of you. I have no compassion for you. You're like crying about being stressed and then you procrastinate. Hi, you. Yeah. I'm just joking. It's okay. I do too. Sometimes. All right. So right about now, you're like, huh? Like, what you, when is the lecture starting? I know you have to go to um, your next class soon. But I will give you something else. Okay. I'm going to give you another tool so that you feel like it was worth, you know, this lunch. Uh, to come here at all. So I want to give you bragging rights. So again, I spoke to the Permissions Bureau and they said you're allowed to brag. And I tell you why you should brag. Because mostly you talk to yourself in a not so nice way, like we said, your internal dialogue, your evil uh, twin, your ego. So to balance it all out, you need to brag a little. And um, how do I know you have bragging rights? I do because you're here. You made it into this program, right? Which is highly, highly competitive. And the knowledge you're getting, right? Future, the, the, the knowledge you're getting is what the future needs. You're also getting communication. You're getting all the right tools for the future. So that's how we also know that you're fine, right? We know that you're wicked smart. You are the future. And then the other thing is, you have time. You have oodles of time. Life is long. Life is long. How old are you? 21, 24? There are so many days of nothing ahead of you, I swear. When you have your first kid and you sit in the sandbox and you're like, right? There are so many days. And every day has so much opportunity, you got plenty of time. Oodles of time. And then, really, what you're up against is this all good choices. All the choices you have are good. All of them. You're here, you're young, you have time, you're smart. If you switch, if you drop that, you'd get into another wicked program. So all the choices you have are good. There's some people who don't have choices, backed in the corner, right? They made many poor choices and then after a while they don't have any left, right? That's not you. So today is good and tomorrow is better. And then the rest of your living days will be even better. So give, you notice that I keep asking you to raise your hand, so I'm going to um, have you just participate again, because uh, so, it's not television, right? So you're going to uh, play with me. Uh, so I want you to say, repeat after me, every day in every way, life is getting better and better and better. Life is getting better and better and better. Say it like you mean it. Every day, in every way, every day, in every way, life is getting better and better and better. Life is getting better and better and better. Now you say that in between your crying sessions at night, you know, after like a failing job. You say that. Because anytime something is going wrong, it's just not going right right now. It's just right now. It's today. It's this exam. Right? That's it. That's it. It's just right now. So, because <laughs> it does feel like this, doesn't it? Why? 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 Right? Um, because when you're stressed, you just have your priorities mixed up, really, like I said. There really are just some things that are more important than, than others. So it's really no biggie. It's no biggie. Um, because the more you try to force an outcome and make it, the harder it gets, right? 
And when you feel like you gotta, you know, uh, knock this off my list, read this, read this, do more, you are, again, you are limiting your space. The walls close in on you, you feel more and more stressed, and then you go dumb, right? You really can't think anymore. So the trick when there are too many things to do is open up the space. Make the space bigger. You have to push the walls back out. That instead of trying to go quicker to do more, you slash. Get rid of, get rid of, and get rid of all the exams of next week. Or even, you know, the day after tomorrow. It's only the next one, right? Only the critical one. And think about your procrastination that has caught you in. And the, why? You know, the lamenting. Think about all that time spent procrastinating or lamenting. You take that back, you could be golfing. You know, you have, you have so much time. All right, so just pulling out to get some perspective because that is what I am providing. As a coach, you know, I, like I said, I've, I've done it for three decades. Most people that I work with are very smart and they actually know what to do and you know what to do. That's not a mystery. You even know how to do it. But like I said, when you are in analysis paralysis, like you can't even sort things. You can't even think of what to do next. Then what you need is room and space and freedom. And I'm like a master of giving people freedom. Like people feel locked up and scared and like, ah, like ah, freedom breathing because that's when you get creative and that's when you get smart and that's when you can connect with people right you can't connect with people if you're too stressed right so i want to give you like a little philosophical thing that along with life is getting better and better that mantra that i just gave you is something you can think about because that gives you freedom snapping into perspective gives you freedom to move on to the next step. And I think partly you procrastinate because um, you're stressed. Right? You, sometimes you're just so locked up that you just wanna forget about it, right? Oh, let's, I just need to watch some TV just to relax and then you fall asleep, right? So the first one, some perspective for you. The purpose. What if this is all on purpose? What if it's on purpose? What if you're supposed to be in the squeeze? What if the squeeze is actually what you're going to school for? Because if you don't knowledge, we can just Google it, right? That's not the point. But to be a leader in the world, you have to be able to sit through the squeeze and not just dip in and out. Grit and resilience is being in the pressure cooker for a long time without melting, right? What if all your teachers know this and they're in cahoots, they're like, just pump them up. Oh, they still seem relaxed, give them more. Because that's what you're coming to school for. So what if it's all on purpose? What if you're supposed to be in the squeeze, to learn to squeeze? Because once you're out of it, there's nothing you can't face. I, I think anybody in the back, any of the, any, anyone a parent here? I see some people in the back. No, no one a parent. No one has a kid here. I'm the only one. Oh my Lord. Okay. You've probably heard this, that once you like get a kid out of you, you're invincible. Like that, the like, rest is easy. <laughs> one, one time I was hit by a truck. That's an expression in, in English and, and the US. Like, it's like being hit by a Mack truck. I'm like, Know what that feels like. I actually got hit by a truck in Manhattan. Uh, I was on my bike and he just creamed me. My whole right side just broke. And so, you know, I was in a wheelchair and I had to learn to walk. And then I was like in my absolute most intense training period to be a coach. So I was all like, I can do this. I'm like firing myself up. Um, so, uh, so they said, you might walk again if you're lucky. Um, but if you walk again, you walk with a limp. And how old was I? 20 something, 27. Uh, and so I started training. They said, but, but to get back, you have to train and whatever. But they, had, they didn't have much hope for me. 
So I started training. I run up and down this uh, staircase in my building, 25 flights every day. I don't know how many times, many times, up and down on, on broken bones to strengthen myself. And three months later, I walked into the doctor's office for a checkup, but I walked in on crutches. And the woman who had been with me in the intensive care unit, Barbara, she was being rolled in on a stretcher. And that was a squeeze. That was a squeeze. But I did it, right? So after that and like three kids, like, oh, please bring it. I often get like, people come to me with their bosses, like here, take my boss. Like they stink, fix them. And then they say, oh, like, oh, you've seen nothing. I'm so messed up. You can't, you can't fix me, I'm hopeless. Or, I'm like, try me. Like, I've been hit by a Mack truck. I've been... So this, is on purpose. And then um, the big idea, I call it the deathbed litmus test. On your deathbed, if you look back at today, what are we? November 12th, 2019. And that self that's about to die, look back and was so proud of how you handled today. What would you do today? So it can guide your every choice. Like, okay, I fell asleep in front of the TV, but I got up, I fell asleep. I got up, I splashed cold water on my face, and then I you know, started studying. Like, what would that person be proud of? So that's a good one for perspective. And then, the mystery. I like, I like this, the mystery. What if it all was the answer? It all, like, what if this is light? What if, it, what if it's this messy? Welcome to life. You think this is hard? It gets messier, right? Then you have your problems and your kids' problems. And I'm like, my kids come to me, I have twins, six-year-old twins and a 10-year-old, and they come to me with their problems. I'm like, leave me alone. I got my own problems. What are you telling me for? Like, go away. There's like so much crap. That, will, that you'll face. But what if that is awesome? Just like I said, what if this is on purpose? Like what if that's how life is? It's not orderly, it's messy. Work-life balance is a joke that doesn't exist. Like life puzzle. There's always that. The life puzzle is when you've done the, those um, puzzles that with a thousand pieces and one piece is missing. Like, ah, like it just doesn't work out. <laughs> And that's fine. Did you know that was fine? So what if you are in a beautiful what if game? And I just give you a few hints, right? Like what if it's on purpose? What if life is messy? What if I got a D on this exam? What if I got another D tomorrow? What if I get an A? What if I become, you know, a vet? What if I become a school teacher? What if I become a NASA engineer? Like, what if it's okay? Like, it's okay. I swear. You have permission to be and have all of it. You're not, the only thing you don't have permission to do is be mean to yourself. You catch your first thought. It's hard to stop the first thought, but after that you have to talk back, okay? So, um, so in that mystery, it really is like, can you leave the riddle alone? Like the riddle of like, like maybe it's not, you're not supposed to figure it out. Maybe it's supposed to be just messy and weird and unsolvable and beautiful, like, like a piece of art. So I just have a couple of, of things and then I'm gonna let you go to your next, uh, your next class. Um, and I was thinking, I was going to do a Q&A, but you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to stay around instead because I want those of you who want to bolt to bolt and the rest of you who have questions or whatever, come, just come see me after. Um, and then also have a sign up list um, outside the door if anybody want to put down your email and I'll just email you if you have a, a private question. So what we got all wrong is <laughs> the first one. Nah, I come on to see that. That's my dad. Oh, well can't just sit here. Like he just said that about everything. Like he would just like, it wasn't okay just hang out. He had to go like, build on the house or fix the fence. Or, 
And then um, maybe it is, right? Maybe the best use of your time would you take three minutes when you're super stressed, instead of knocking off another thing off your list, take those three minutes, set your alarm, close your eyes, and deep breathe. Count how many deep breaths you get in with eyes closed in three minutes. Those are the best spent three minutes you'll have all day because of how it will rejuvenate you for the next session you're going into. Uh, it's a smart transition time, like to just complete one section of the day and go into the next. And then this like gotta, gotta get ahead thing, right? Like really? Do you? For what? Right? Like what are you like what are you in a hurry? Like what are you so what are you rushing towards? Where are you going? Except for death. <laughs> like what are you in a hurry for? Right? Like what you know, where are you going? Where are you going in such a hurry? And I'm not saying you don't have deadlines, but you, you know what I mean? Like that breathlessness. Life goes on in there, doesn't it? And then, um, yeah, and, and like I said, you know, life is getting better. You can also, also ask yourself, what does making it look like? I gotta make it. Like, what does that look like then? I don't know. Good job. All right. And then what, you buy a house? And then, so you made it. I have a house, two houses, three, in fact. It doesn't, like, it doesn't, then you have the house and you have to fix it when it breaks. <laughs> like, what's the make it? Where are you going in such a hurry? And number three, I'm falling behind everybody else. The only rival, true rival you'll ever have, except for the internal dialogue, are other people forming a team. There is no individual on planet Earth that ever made it and did it on their own. So if you're an individual, it's kind of like worrying about what the other individuals are doing. You don't have to worry about that. The people who organize themselves, like the ones that form study groups, the ones that work as a team, that is your rival. If you want to wonder who's your rival. People who know how to get underneath each other. Because what happens is, like you figure things out together, you will never learn something better than when you teach it. You probably know that, right? Because then you have to figure out, how did I get there? What's my thought process? So, um, so again, I'm just gonna wrap it up a little bit with like, better to do less, but more of things that matter. Right? Like looking critically at all the things you do and which of these actually pertain to exactly what I'm dealing with right now. And the rest you gotta check it, right? And then, then you won't be as stressed, you won't. Give yourself freedom first. Breathe first, sleep, eat, take those three minutes. So again, this is your assignment. I don't talk to anybody without giving them homework. The deathbed litmus test. The deathbed litmus test is hard to say. I'm on my deathbed, how did I handle this moment in a way that would make me proud, that made me proud, right? And then my kids and grandchildren, they talked about that and they said, you know, grandma and grandpa, you know what they did in this moment? Here's what they did. Like it's freaking amazing. Did you see that um, coach, the athletes coach that stopped that shooter, it was like a week or two ago? It was this guy, this active shooter who was gonna go into the gym, um, whatever, PE hall, and shoot his schoolmates. And they caught them on this video camera where this coach gets up, he sees him, walks up and he just hugs him. He pulls the gun, gives it to someone else and just pulls him and hugs him, right? That's a death at litmus test. That is amazing. Isn't that amazing? And that guy tried to struggle free, but you saw that he was fighting himself. He was like almost in tears. Because really, did he really want to do that? Probably not. He was probably hurting from something else, right? That guy saved not only the schoolmate's life, but this kid who would have gone away, you know, for the rest of his life. So that's something he later would be so proud of. And that will go down in his family like a legacy, right? So um, I said, if you have any questions, um, oh, by the way, 
that's the podcast. I talk to uh, thought leaders and people who are moving the needle in the world. Do subscribe, do listen. But if you have questions, come up to me afterwards or email me so you can get to the next, your next class. But um, before I just wrap up, let's just practice one more time, okay? So you have it in you. Every day, in every way. Every day, in every way. Life is getting better and better and better. Life is getting better and better and better. I'm Coach Joe, Johanna Sawapa. Thank you. Thank you.